Hi there, my name is Ryan Craig. I'm a licensed timber and building, timber pest and building consultant on residential properties. I own my own company, QC's Building Services, and have been doing work for around 20 years on residential properties, carrying out inspections. This video is designed to provide some feedback and information to purchasers of potential properties of residential nature about some of the more commonly found defects during our inspections that are most likely to cause uh, the biggest cost in terms of rectification or dealing with. Um, so I hope you find this informative um, in relation to the information about these defects. Um, it's important to know that the video contains some, not all of them, um, so there are others, but um, the most common ones that we could think of in terms of the building inspections we've carried out over the last nearly 20 years, um, the more frequent ones that pop up. Just also to clarify, it's not the role of an inspection company or a consultant doing inspections to quantify specific costs for any defects, but certainly the ones that I'm about to explain and cover and some issues in relation to them um, are the most uh, common ones that have large costs associated to them, for sure. Um, strangely uh, and concerningly, um, some and quite a lot of the defects we're going to talk about in this video are actually specifically excluded from the Australian standard for a residential building inspection. Um, that is really problematic um, in terms of what inspection company a purchaser uses to carry out their building inspection because the greater majority of inspection companies based on what I've seen over the years will only adhere to the minimum requirements of the Australian standard and not exceed the standard and therefore will not comment in a lot of these areas of defects I'm about to talk about. That causes some significant issues for purchasers um, if they use companies that only adhere to the minimum requirements for two reasons. One is obviously they're not going to be advised about the defect, which they should be because any competent and experienced inspector will have knowledge in the areas I'm about to talk about. And secondly, the other aspect is, apart from not being made aware of the defect within the report because of the company adheres to the minimum standard, is that there's no legal availability for a purchaser or client to actually withdraw from a contract about the defects that I'm going to be listed. The reason for that is that the contract used for the purchase and sale of residential properties, which has been designed by the REIQ, the governing body for real estate, uh, real estate agents, specifically states that only um, information within a building report can be acted on in terms of pulling out of a contract. So therefore, if companies are engaged that only do the minimum requirement, don't talk about the following issues, it won't be in the building report, and therefore there's no legal opportunity or avenue or recourse um, for the purchaser to pull out of a contract on these very significant issues. But we're going to talk about what solutions and rectifications and steps you can take to overcome this within the video. Because of this, um, I, what we're identifying right now is um, always purchasers must always ensure that they only engage companies that comment in all areas when they do an inspection, regardless of whether or not it is excluded or included on the Australian standard. Um, basically, our or the way we operate is that any inspection we do, any information that we feel we can provide that it's of benefit to our clients and may assist them in minimizing or reducing the risks of sustaining any costs or financial loss, will be commented on in the building report, irrelevant if it's excluded from the standard. We would, of course, have to put a disclaimer in there stating um, for legal reasons that um, despite us commenting on it, um, it shouldn't be relied on or that's just the legal live land, but it's certainly better than what most companies do, which is not to comment on it at all. So by commenting on um, issues outside and above the Australian standard, what we give our clients is the ability to be informed of the defect first and foremost. Secondly, we give them a legal platform to act on that information and withdraw from a contract if it's of that magnitude and they feel they want to because it's in our building report. So the first um, defect we're going to talk about that is known to be problematic and can cause some quite significant costs is swimming pools. So the first thing to note about swimming pools is they are specifically excluded from the building inspection, Australian standard for building inspections. Therefore, most companies will not talk about any issues in relation to swimming pools. And believe me, there can be defects that are very visible to an inspector or normal person that could be identified and put in a report, uh, disclaimed for legal reasons, but the client would then be informed. Things like leak, um, leak detection on the outside of the shell, um, resurfacing, 
Um, if the inside of the pebble text coping and stuff is badly surfaced, it'll need to be drained and renovated, and that involves the whole pool being drained at significant cost. Any cracks within the pool, those kinds of things, um, any problems with any of the motors showing um, leaks and stuff like that. This can cost not just thousands, but tens of thousands of dollars because of the need that um, many repairs for swimming pools, um, if there's corrosion visible in some of the pool as well, the water will need to be drained and to do the rectification, that's essential in most cases and that's where the big cost comes in. So renovating a pool, doing resurfacing and things like that can cost anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000, so significant work. Again, this area is excluded from a building inspection and it's important you know that as a purchaser. Another area that can cost very significant cost and be undetected because it's actually excluded from a building inspection is that of air conditioning systems. Not so much for split systems, they can be relevant in terms of um, cost if they're faulty or um, um, need, uh, if they've got defects that need repairs or rectification, but ducted air conditioning systems. Unlike split systems where you can identify, a or there's a localised split system, you can repair that. With ducted systems, it seems that sometimes repairs are not necessarily a component of the ducted, but the entire system of the ducted, and therefore you can get repairs running into the $20,000, $25,000 mark. That won't be able to be detected by a building inspection, a building consultant, but certainly if they have a, an, um, someone who doesn't just exclude it and comments and um, tries to turn the system on, you'll be off to a better start and position because on many occasions we've identified ducted air cons that aren't working, not operational, we couldn't start them, we put it in the report and then our clients have found out that from further investigation that it's completely faulty and they need to repair it at $25,000. Now consider the other avenue whereas if a company didn't comment at all about ducted air conditionings or try to turn it on at least as a minimum then basically that client wouldn't be informed and they'd inherit and buy a property potentially not knowing about this defect and suffering $25,000 to fix an existing defect that could have been identified. So um, this is um, the next one is not really a defect, but it's an intangible or um, it's kind of issue that purchasers need to know about. The biggest issue about buying residential properties, and that is, is the property you're buying actually what is being marketed to you or is there any problems with certification and its status legally with the local council authority? What I mean by that is a lot of properties are marketed to the general public, like a four bedroom, two bathroom, or five bedroom, three bathroom, by the marketing agents on the realestate.com and domain.com, but when you formally test that and carry out a legal search, which is the only way to define the characteristics of a property with the relevant council authority, over 50% of the time, 50% of the time, I said, and that's right, it's astounding, but 5-0, the searches reveal that the property is not a four bed, two bath, as it's in the marketing, or a five bed, three bath. It's actually incomplete or informal building work, or it's a three bed, one bath, and you're being misled with the marketing. So the biggest issue that people can have with purchasing a property is they buy a property and they are misled. There is untruthfulness in the marketing. And so for, because of this, um, that can sustain major financial costs um, it might inherit a problem where you buy a property that you can never get a final inspection certificate because it's existing structure and the litigious considerations are too difficult. You might run into serious issues trying to sell the property because it's not certified and formal when other people um, you know, are trying to buy it in the future and carry out searches. If there's a fire, most insurance companies will reject any insurance claim because there's unapproved or informal building work. That's part of their rejection or um, disclaimer. Um, insurance companies for third party fire and theft claims. So. You must do a search with the relevant council authority. That's the only way you can determine what is being bought. And believe me, over 50% of the time when we do inspections for clients, it is determined that what is being marketed is not factually reflective of what the truth is on the council records. And they are the only organization that can determine what status and characteristics a property has. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is retaining walls. Um, rectification or replacing retaining walls. Obviously, this can be runs to the tens of thousands of dollars depending on the length of the wall, the height of the wall, the types of material. If it's over a meter, it will require certification and engineering, and there are additional costs involved with that. But basically, with any retaining wall that's identified during a building inspection, if there's a need to, if it's deteriorated significantly, understand that in the future, the need to replace or repair that will involve major cost, particularly if it's a long wall and it's high because you need a lot of materials and um, it's just tens of thousands of dollars depending on the length and height. Drainage rectification is another issue that can cost a lot of money to rectify. So if you have any issues in, identified in a building inspection um, of a drainage nature, particularly if there's high exterior ground against 
a building line uh, down the lower flooring where drainage and there's moisture permeation. To rectify that involves a lot of significant um, foundation work and excavation. So that can run into thousands of dollars as well. So anything relating to drainage can also be a very expensive um, nature. Timber, termite damage um, is another area that can be quite expensive. Very difficult to actually concisely determine costs for timber damage at a property if it's known that there's been a termite history because you visually can't see all of the timbers at a property. So you won't know of the full extent of the damage, but you must assume that there could be significant damage in concealed areas that a visual and non-invasive inspection, which is done at the time of your due diligence with a timber pest inspection, won't tell you. And certainly there can be thousands and tens of thousands of dollars if it's known that there's been a prolonged, significant and uh, infestation of a termite genus, which is very destructive in its nature. Asbestos identification and removal, particularly the removal, is known to be another highly expensive process to do for the defect. If you're considering that and you're buying a property with asbestos and you want to remove it, the sheer cost of removing it alone can be certain tens of dollars in square meter to just re remove. Um, for instance, but, but that's not the only consideration you've got. Say if you've got a bathroom and you wanted to remove the asbestos walls in the bathroom, you can't just remove those wall linings. You have to remove the bath, the shower, the vanity, the toilet, and all of the fixtures. You, in essence, you have to strip the whole bathroom and completely rebuild it because to get to the wall linings and ceiling lines, which could be fibro or asbestos, all of those fixtures need to be removed. So in areas where it's just a bedroom where you can remove it and there's no fixtures, less of a consideration and cost factor. But when you have wet areas or kitchens or laundries, and there are fixtures and fittings with asbestos that you want to remove, please understand that you will also have to completely renovate that room in order to remove all of that fibre. So that can be quite expensive. The last one um, that I'd like to cover about defects that can be quite expensive is roof replacements. Um, metal usually or fibro, very unusual to have concrete tile or other roofs replaced, but metal due to corroding and age uh, deterioration and fibro um, because of the health risk associated. That's the asbestos type roofing of um, 1930s onwards to about the 1980s. Um, basically, they can run, depending on the size of the roof, the complexity of the roof, and if gutters and insulation is being installed, anywhere between $12,000 to $25,000. Um, so what I would suggest is a strong recommendation, particularly because of the costs associated with certain defects or issues at a property. So if you're buying a house that's got a swimming pool or ducted air conditioning system, we would very strongly recommend, recommend to any purchaser in those scenarios where properties have those fixtures and fittings that your contract is amended at the time you fill it out to allow for you to carry out a formal inspection and audit of those fittings, swimming pool and the air conditioning system by a suitably qualified and licensed contractor. And furthermore, that the contract has a clause added that if anything is identified that is a significant of cost and requires rectification, that you have an ability to withdraw from the contract because of that, the current contract that is used for the purchase and sale of properties will not allow you to do this, and it is heavily biased against the purchaser in terms of defect identification and acting on it um, as part of a building inspection report, because many of these things, as I said, are excluded from a standard building inspection, and most companies don't comment on it, and if it's not included in the building inspection report, you have no legal ability to act on it, because that's what is a requirement in the contract for the information to be contained in the billing report in order for a purchaser to withdraw if they're not satisfied. So big considerations for you to be aware of. The other thing that we would strongly recommend a purchaser do as part of their amendment to contracts and ensure they do when they fill out a contract is to amend the contract that is used to include a clause that allows for you to carry out a formal search with the local council authority because remember, over 50% of the properties, based on our experiences, that go to the market on internet are falsely advertised and incorrectly advertised. You don't want to be buying a property that is not what you think it is. So the only way you can deal with this is by when you fill out the contract for the purchase and sale of the property, you have to add a clause in there saying that there is an allowance for you to carry out a search with the council authority to determine what the nature of the property is and the characteristics on formal council records. And if it's not reflective of what's been marketed or if there's untruthfulness in how it's been marketed or there's problems or informal, informal, incomplete building work with the property, that you also have an, a, an allowance or an ability to withdraw from the contract free of penalty because of this, because of the severity of this problem. So um, basically, in order to achieve best legal protection, 
it's essential that you amend the contract at the time you fill it out and you cannot do it afterwards. If you fill out the contract with the agent after an open home and just use the standard contract, if you find things out like there's problems with swimming pools, there's problems with building certification, there's problems with air conditioning units, and you use a company that doesn't comment in those areas because they're only adhering to the minimum standards, you'll have no legal ground to pull out on and you'll be at very serious risk of having to buy a property with no ability to get out because you have no legal ability to do so for the reasons I've said. In summary, a purchaser should always engage an inspection company that exceeds the Australian standards and doesn't just adhere to the minimum requirements. Why? Because number one, if they get a company that's going to be thorough and comment in areas over and above the majority who don't because they only adhere to the minimum requirements, you'll be better informed, you'll be fully informed of every defect and issue potentially there, and you'll be able to make a more informed decision, which will minimise the risk of you suffering any potential financial loss. The second benefit of this is that you will get a better legal ability and potential to act and withdraw from any of the issues identified by companies who exceed the minimum requirements because it's contained in the building report. We always put everything that we find in our report because we know by doing this, we give the potential, the purchaser and client of ours an availability to act on that information. It's crucial that it's in the building report as part of the contractual requirements that are used for the purchase and sale of a property. Um, the always obtain quotes for um, are defects that are identified during the course of a building inspection for the most expensive ones. I mean, not for things like sticking doors, cracked window panes, for the defects that are identified that are going to be of significance in terms of to cost. Um, your building inspection company should be able to guide you on this and say, look, these are the ones that are going to be more significant in cost and this is where you should consider getting quotes for, from. Because if you don't do that, you won't be able to quantify the amounts to rectify and you won't be able to act on this um, and potentially negotiate with the vendor and save yourself inheriting a defect that's going to cost you a lot of money. You should get three quotes from licensed and appropriately qualified um, contractors in the area of the defect, and you should also make it conditional in your contract but with your conveyancing solicitor, amending the contract when these defects are identified, that you are allowed to um, basically get the quotes and act on them and um, withdraw if they, you find that the quotes are of significant um, cost. Um, so make sure your, lay, your legal conveyancing representatives ensure your contract is amended at the time you fill it out to put all these provisions in because the existing contract used, if you just fill that out, you'll be at the mercy of the real estate agents who design the contract and it's so far against the purchases and gives you very little um, rights or protection legally in terms of buying a property. That's why it's been designed like that. Um, in relation to ducted and air conditioning systems, those are the two critical ones where you should organise independent inspections and put provisions in the contract that allow you to pull out if anything is identified of a significant nature because the current contract, as I said, the standard building inspection um, with minimal requirements and the current contract used to, sign, to buy the property will give you no legal protection and rights to pull out on some of these very significant issues. Never act on quotes obtained by the vendor or the agent for a defect that involves significant cost or never ever act on any verbal assurances from the vendor or the agent about any defect. You must do it yourself independently and that's the only way you're gonna get concise, accurate details about any costs for significant defects. And again, always ensure you get quotes from at least three independent um, licensed contractors in the area in question so that you can make a decision based on three not one quote. You might get one quote, it might be well underpriced. If you get three, then you can average it out and then you'll be far closer to the mark. I hope you found this video informative and it helps you in relation to this issue. And thank you very much for watching.